It's the night before Christmas. The family's at the fireside. And for the children, the hour is one minute before bedtime. Of all nights, of all bedtimes, this is the most difficult. For tomorrow is Christmas, and sleep is not for youngsters who wait for surprises, who conjure up fantasies of a giant tree glittering with lights and tinsel planted in an acre of bright new toys. And so later, when the children are in bed, to be sure, the scene is set. The big surprise unfolded. This year, Johnny will get his electric train, his iron pony, and Mom and Dad can't help but think of other Christmases, other surprises, other childhoods. It seems only yesterday to Dad that he was bounding downstairs on a cold Christmas morning to find a toy train of his own. Nothing as slick as this, of course, but indelible in boyhood memory. clicks on the rails and the gentle purr of the locomotive remind him of those early, crude, but wonderful models and the days when he engineered Casey Jones Jr. himself. The old trains dad remembers have come a long way. The stem winders, the battery-powered models, and the first plug-ins with transformers that got so hot you could scramble an egg on them are gone. The toy trains of today have moved along with their bigger, real-life brothers on the main line of American railroad progress. Real trains have a romance all their own, with names that are legendary. And what youngster hasn't dreamed of high-balling down the right-of-way at 90 miles an hour, signal going full blast? never get to run a locomotive, but with models, they can run a whole road. Millions of Americans, like William Gargan and Grover Whalen, are toy train fans. Here they see a remarkable innovation, a real railroad-type coupler, which is operated by remote control. It permits coupling and uncoupling of cars, switching and operation of all gadgets while the trains are in motion. The boss of this railroad takes inventory right from his remote control panel board. Here are some of the things he operates. A conveyor-type lumber loader. A milk car with delivery right to the platform. A cattle car. Livestock has to be exercised en route, and this takes them out of the car, into the corral, and back into the car again. A freight station with very busy and efficient baggage men. A crack streamliner, complete with Vista Dome observation car. An automatic crossing watchman who keeps motorists clear of the tracks. Then too, there's a coal loader, another operation with complete remote control. And 
the searchlight car, the big eye for wrecking and repair crews. If you should strike oil on your right-of-way, you're covered by this derrick and pump. to those big rivers, just wait for the drawbridge. Working on this railroad is strictly a push-button job. Designing this equipment requires considerable ingenuity and planning by model train executives and engineers. They maintain close contact with the railroads, are quick to adapt new developments to the toy train field. Railroads encourage toy companies to adapt their designs, readily furnish blueprints and photos. Designers carefully study pictures of real trains and adapt them with fidelity to half pint specifications. Locomotives are particularly studied, and whether it be a modern diesel or a rugged steam job, the model will follow the design of the real thing. Building locomotives and cars for full-size trains is a mighty productive enterprise involving a highly skilled workforce, massive machinery, huge parts, and great plants. train building is a different story. The plant is large, so is the production, but everything else is in miniature. This factory turns out 80,000 pieces of track a day. Here are some more production figures. 25,000 cars roll off its assembly lines every 24 hours, and every hour, 250 diesel locomotives come off the line under their own power. Every conceivable gadget and accessory is produced in great quantity and in small size. Finished trains are subjected to wear tests, run continuously until they break down, check durability. This railroad carries no passengers or freight, but keeps a lot of grown men busy. They're another brand of hobbyist, perhaps the most rabid of all, the train builders of the model club. Most of them were bitten by the railroad bug at an early age and never got over it. The men who in daily life, maybe doctors, lawyers, businessmen, or teachers, play in a kid's idea of fairyland. Everything, trains, track, bridges, tunnels, landscapes, scenery, and buildings is handmade. There are engineers, roundhouse men, painters, dispatchers, and conductors. Schedules are scrupulously maintained, and efficient operation keeps the line a model in every sense of the word. Christmas morning, when Johnny and his sister come bouncing into the living room to behold the eighth wonder of the world, it'd be nice if they knew the story behind electric trains, but 
Of course, it's Christmas. And Johnny's too excited to be bothered with stories today. It's an old, old story, Johnny. And that goes for the part where Pop starts telling you how to run her. Don't let him. You'll never get him away from her if you do. Well, you've got your train, young fella. You drive her anywhere you want, to California, South Setauket, or Timbuktu. So take her away, Johnny. You're Casey Jones III, boss of the Iron Pony. is the dramatic story of progress and transportation. From the earliest horse-drawn coach to the streamliner of today, we laugh at the thought of a horse out racing a locomotive, but that's what happened a little more than a century ago when one of the first steam-driven passenger trains in America, the Tom Thumb, came in a poor second to Old Dobbin. But Tom Thumb grew into a giant, and Old Dobbin was left far behind. Years of progress changed the size, power, and speed of these chariots of the rails, and a railroad engineer became something of a hero. More than just a story of progress, railroading became part of the drama of America's dynamic growth from a frontier society to a great nation whose mighty cities and farms and factories are linked by bands of steel. Just as America has grown apace with the phenomenal progress of its railroads, so does young America grow up with model trains. The American boy who dreams of someday becoming an engineer spends many happy hours playing with realistic models like the ones displayed in this wonderful showroom. These miniature lines have most of the features of real railroads, stations, switches, tunnels, bridges, signal towers, even realistic scenery. And the little engines and cars are amazingly accurate, perfect to the tiniest detail. What hours of fun and excitement are spread out here before the delighted gaze of a little boy. Railroads have come a long way since the days of Tom Thumb, and model railroads have come a long way since the days of the spring winder Dad used to play with when he was a boy. Dad was born too soon. Look what he missed. Electricity runs the little streamliners and freight trains. It operates the switches and signal towers and the other intricate devices that make model railroading as wonderfully interesting and complicated as the real thing. of growing up to be the engineer of a big, black, powerful steam engine, the hours of apprenticeship spent on a small-scale line are richly rewarding. Here he is king. Here at his bidding, the trains start and stop. The whistles blow, the lights flash, the switches turn. He is lord and master of all the railroad he surveys. American boys have looked longingly at models like these, have asked generations of American fathers to buy them trains like this, and have cluttered up living rooms with yards and yards of track to the dismay of generations of American mothers. As 
as long as there are youngsters, there will be model trains and all the other paraphernalia that make model railroading the big thrill in a little boy's life. comes easily to little boys, and so do dreams. In his dreams, he travels fast and far into history. He is Ben-Hur, racing his chariot in the Colosseum of ancient Rome. He is skipper of a full-rigged ship, captain of a clipper rounding the horn. He feels a kinship with John Paul Jones. The adventure and romance of travel are woven into the fabric of his dreams, and he sails on through the night. He is a decorated ace and takes off in a jet fighter. Up, 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 flying faster than the speed of sound, faster than the speed of dreams. he cries, Geronimo! And bails out over enemy territory. Of course, he dreams about trains. How could he help it after that visit to the model train exhibit? He doesn't wait till he grows up to become the engineer. He just dreams he's one. He dreams he's Casey Jones, that fearless, brave engineer famed in story and song. And he is all set for the fastest, most exciting train ride in history to the coast and back, non-stop, in the time it takes to dream it. And a dream is a train, as Casey Jones sits in the cab of his locomotive and thunders across the country. Cities and farms roll past in a vast panorama of sight and sound. Just wait till Skinny and the other kids hear about this. Won't they be jealous? The fires burn, and the steam sings, and the wheels turn. The train picks up dust in Kansas and lets it down again in Oklahoma. The whistle blows in Florida and they hear it in Vermont. The smoke rises over the prairie and they see it in the city. Lickety-cut, lickety-cut, listen to the clickety-click. a falling star. So back you autos, back you cows. I'm coming as fast as the law allows. Country Express, our pint-sized Casey Jones, has been bitten by the railroad bug for good. Asleep or awake, he will hear the rumble of the wheels singing in his ears the rest of his life. Corporation presents The Wonderful World of Trains. Starring the Cesare Puppets. With Paul O'Keefe.
real live missiles. Just like the ones on the Lionel missile firing car you can own, it fires four artillery type missiles. Lionel missile firing car loaded and ready. Lionel helicopter car. Stand by for takeoff to spot the target. Launch helicopter. Helicopter 3419. Enemy box car with explosives on sighting. Ready missiles. Fire! Direct hit on Lionel's exploding target car. Three Lionel cars you'll want for your own. A helicopter car. A Lionel missile firing car. And exploding box car. This Christmas, remember, you are the boss when you own Lionel trains. Mr. Policeman, I'll put you here so you can see everything. Mr. Professor, I'll put you right. Professor Hunt of a world of trains. Yes, indeed. That's where you are. Trains, 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 and they're all late. Oh, my. But you can talk. Of course I can talk. I have been talking for years. Started when I was 14 months old. And I might add, I'm getting mighty tired of waiting for the show to start. For I am the narrator and guide for the wonderful world of trains. Oh, yes. Wonderful world of trains. Late. They're all late. Late, late. Pardon me, Professor. Have you been around long? Around long? Oh, oh, 65 years. Birthday's next week. No, no, no. I, I mean, have you been waiting here long? Here? Long? Too long, oh yes. Much too long. Waiting for the show to start, you know. The wonderful world of trains. Trains, hundreds of trains, all late, all late. <laughs> well, I'm looking for a man. About your height. Uh, calls himself Algy. A disreputable looking fellow. Needs a shave. Wearing old clothes. If you see him, let me know. Man, disreputable. Of course, of course. Oh, oh. Thank you, Professor. Wonderful world of trains. Late, late. They're all late, 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 late. Oh. <laughs> I'm Algy Caboose, I'm on the loose in the wonderful world of trains. There's plenty of action, thrills, and fun across the hills and plains. Cause you control the countryside, it's all at your command. The finest trains you ever saw, the switch is in your hand. So no matter how old or young you are, from six to sixty-five, when you're in the wonderful world of trains, it's great to be alive. Oh, it's great to be alive. Doom, dee, doom, doom, boom, boom, boom. Well, bless my soul, what have we here? Don't tell me, let me guess. An ad for a dull razor. Ho, ho, ho. No offense, my good man, just making a little joke. A disreputable looking character, if ever I saw one. Uh, Professor, I suggest you either stop breathing or back up. You're using up my air. 
Better still lie down. Let's both take a snooze. I'm waiting for a fast freight myself, you know. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, boys and girls of all ages. This is your master of ceremonies, George Dinkwistle, welcoming you to the wonderful world of trains. Now, for the first time, you are about to see a most remarkable exhibition of electric trains. Trains so finely detailed, you'll have to look twice to tell them from the real one. And to give you a first-hand description of these amazing trains of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we are honored to have as our guide an old train man an expert on trains, track, and travel, Professor Herman J. Hotbox. Professor Hotbox, eh? Fast asleep. Ah, too bad. Pity to wake him. He needs his sleep. But no matter, for no man knows more about trains than I, Algernon Caboose. You, boy, pop those eyeballs back in their sockets and come alive. You look like a puppet. Come on, boy, I need an assistant, and you're it. They can talk and move all by themselves. I declare, boy, you act like I wasn't real. Come now, throw that switch. The wonderful world of trains is about to begin. <clears throat> begin? Did I say begin? Why, the fact is the wonderful world of trains has been going on for years. Ah, yes, wonderful, wonderful trains. The very sight of them recalls the romance of faraway places. How well I recall my days as gatekeeper in the little railroad town of Wet Moccasin. Used to sit by the hour, hand on the gate, waiting for the silver media to highball on through. For five years, I just sat there and marveled at the great speed of that train, a train too fast to see with the naked eye. And then, that day, two o'clock on a Thursday it was, I found out the truth. That blur I thought was the media turned nothing but a smear of hair oil on my sunglasses. Oh, the disappointment of it all. That silver media never came closer than 50 miles from wet moccasin. Seems they ran out of track and never told me. Five years I waited, five wasted years. But through it all, my love of trains never dimmed. I still get a thrill when I see those steel wheels clacking along the rails. Ah, the thought of them speeding along the hills and valleys Gleaming monsters of steel, racing, racing over bridges and signals, flashing and moving. It overwhelms me, boy, overwhelms me. What was that? A diesel streamliner. I thought you knew all about trains. I do, boy, I do. But I'm a freight man myself. Ah, I think I hear her coming now. A fully loaded freight. A truly magnificent sight. What kind of a freight is that? That's a United States Navy diesel freight. The roughest, toughest fighting train there is. Hmm, well, what do you know? A whale with a top hat. That's not a whale, Algy. That's a replica of a real Navy submarine. And it really works. Oh, oh, oh. Knew it all the time, boy, just testing you. Mighty smart young fella you are, too. Reminds me of myself when I was a boy. A positive genius I was, too. As my dear mother used to say, Algernon, she called me Algernon, Algernon, she'd say, science has been waiting for a head like yours for over a million years. Boy, did I hear you say that submarine really works? You bet she works. It take her off the special car and launch her. She dives, cruises underwater, and surfaces, just like a real sub. Oh, yes. When the test run is over, they'll load her on the special sub-carrying flat car. Oh, very fine, very fine. 
But boy, you're forgetting that I, Algernon Caboose, am the narrator here. I'm sorry, Algie. I didn't mean to take over. Here, you tell us about the next car. Oh, yes, of course, of course. The next car, yes. A magnificent specimen. Perfect in every detail. Flawless in design. It's the, uh, the, uh... Algie, describe it. Everyone wants to know how it works. Ah, yes. The train. Oh, yes. Beautiful, isn't it? It's called a, a, a memory lapse. You mean helicopter car, don't you, Algie? Took the words right out of my mouth, boy. And this real-looking helicopter takes off from its specially designed flat car deck. Watch this. I'm watching. I'm watching, boy, from a distance. Off she goes, into the air. How's that for action, Algie? Action? Sounds, sounds, boy. I'm quivering with excitement. Ah, oh, wonderful feeling it is, too. Algie, get off the wheel and tell us about the next car. Oh, yes. <coughs> oh, the next. Ah, uh, oh, yes, the magnificent uh, banana car. Oh, four ripe bananas. Uh, Algie, those are not bananas. This is a missile firing car. And I am mounting these four missiles for firing. Ah, oh, yes. Just testing to see if you're wide awake. A little trick of mine, you know. The missile firing car, of course. With missiles that really fire. Really fire? That's right, Algie. These missiles really fire. See that freight car in that siding over there? <laughs> That's my kind of freight car. Say, boy, did I ever tell you how I pulled a freight car full of apples over ten miles uphill just for the exercise? Could have pulled it another ten if I wasn't so full of apples. <clears throat> what you gonna do now? Never mind, Algie. Just give me the countdown and watch that freight car. Ten, nine, eight. Gotcha, boy. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Disaster. Complete disaster. Zounds, boy. Look what you've done to my favorite freight. Oh, the pity of it. Don't worry, Algie. That car is made to fall apart when it's hit, but you can put it right together again. Excuse me, son. Did I hear you speak to someone by the name of Algie? Well, he was right here a minute ago. Missed him again. Uh, thank you, boy. Relax, boy. Algernon Caboose is back, ready to expound with unfailing accuracy the ecstatic beauty and magnificent perfection of the wonderful world of trains. Decks awash. With a thunderous roar, she breaks the surface. It's the giant new Navy submarine on her final test run. The only sub more exciting than this one is the new Lionel submarine you can own. A real-as-life operating sub, mounted on the Lionel submarine car. Gee, does she really die? You bet. Go on, boy, take her off the special Lionel car. Put her in your own ocean and launch her. Now, take her down, Skipper. She dives just like a real sub. She cruises. She moves underwater. Then surfaces automatically. When the run is over, you can ship her anywhere in the whole country on her special flat car. It's one of hundreds of real-as-life Lionel trains you can command. This Christmas, ask Dad for the exciting new Lionel submarine car. Remember, boy, you are the boss when you own Lionel trains. Ah, oh, the wonder of it. The whole countryside full of real-as-life electric trains. Everyone complete down to the finest detail. Boy, unless these old eyes of mine deceive me, there is a stupendous crash in the offing. Don't worry, Algie. Everything's under control. Control? Fiddlesticks. I fear I'm about to witness a veritable crash of the century. He can't, I can't look. <laughs> Oh. Poor Algie. He's faded. Wake up, Algie. 
Bobby, wake up! I tell you, officer, I didn't do it. I was in Africa at the time, rounding up giraffes for different Dorfer's circus. Algy, wake up! Algy, wake up! I'm not the policeman! Don't bother me, officer. Can't you see I'm enjoying a wonderful dream? Oh, the beauty of it. My African giraffes. Captured every one myself. Loaded them on a special freight train. You never saw such a train. Loaded with giraffes as far as the eye could see. Oh, a thrilling sight. It's no dream, Algy. There really is a giraffe car in the wonderful world of trains. Yep. Giraffe cars. <laughs> and they're wonderful like you said. But, Algy, were you really in Africa hunting big game? Boy, you are looking upon the only hunter in the world to catch a full-grown African elephant with a butterfly net. <laughs> I must admit the net was reinforced, you understand? Egad, what a feat of daring. It was second only to the way I say the Tehachapi freight from complete disaster. You prevented a train wreck? I think you're fooling me. Boy, if I'm fooling, may a freight full of fish come down the track. Hey, looks like a freight. Hey, it's an aquarium car and you can see the fish swimming around inside it. A mere coincidence, a trick of fate, a dream, it can't be. He can, a freight car with fish that swim around. Tell me, how did you save a train from a wreck? Or is that another fish story? Fish story indeed. Your insult hurts me to the core, boy, to the very core. But if my admirers insist on hearing my story, yeah, let's get on with it. Ah, yes. A clear and sunny day it was, not more than two weeks ago. I was in my usual position beside the track, waiting for the fast freight to Tehachapi. Didn't mind the wait a bit. Oh, there was so much to see. There was Willie Fliegelflueger, the railroad maintenance man, going back and forth on his motorized car. Good man, that Willie. Used to be the foreman in a yo-yo factory. Couldn't stand the monotony, so he changed his job. And not so far off, they were unloading a load of lumber from one of those newfangled lumber cars. Beautiful sight to see. Well, sir, I must have been waiting for an hour or more when suddenly she came round the bend. That there had to be freight? Nope. It was the general steaming full speed down the main line. Pretty as a picture she was. Then suddenly she slowed right smack in the middle of the right away. Did something go wrong with the engine? Not really, boy. That engineer just eased up on his throttle while he ate his lunch. You see, it was a mighty hot day and he didn't want to take any chances on his cheese sandwiches going bad. Then it happened. His cheese boiled? No, no, no. The Tehachapi Freight came a barreling down the main line on the same track as the General. Closer and closer she came, but that engineer and the General just kept on eating his sandwich. I tell you, boy, you never saw such excitement in your life. And on she came, heading straight for the General's middle. Where did you go? I acted with the speed of light. Reached out my foot and kicked the switch. Not a second too soon. The polish right off my shoe. Gosh! It's free. It's the new Lionel Train catalog with more than 56 pages jam-packed with full-color pictures of track layouts, equipment, and trains, including the new missile launching car that fires a missile just like the real thing. Watch. Raise missile to firing position. Fire. Direct hit on Lionel's exploding target car. And here's the biggest news of all. Right inside the new Lionel catalog is your chance to win $1,000. You can win up to $1,000 in cash in the new Lionel Track Layout Contest. There are over 500 prizes. 
Enter the Lionel Track Layout Contest now. Complete rules and simple layouts are in the new Lionel Train Catalog. Go to your Lionel dealer and get your free copy while his supply lasts. Please, please, boy, it was nothing. Algy? Think he went that away. Algernon Caboose? Oh, well. World traveler? Storyteller? Self-appointed guide? Hero of the wonderful world of trains? I didn't do it. I was miles from here, whiling my time away at a drive-in movie. Ah, yes, I remember the picture well about a policeman who arrested the wrong man. Got 20 years, that policeman did. Algernon, I'm not here to arrest you. You're not? I represent the owners of the Tehachapi Freight Line. Ah, yes. The Tehachapi Freight. I shall long have a soft spot in my heart for that magnificent train. Many of the nights I spent watching the stars from a neg crate on one of her smooth riding flat cars. Tehachapi Freight? Yes, Algy. The Tehachapi Railroad has asked me to present you with this gold medal as a token of their gratitude for saving their train from a wreck. Gosh, Algie, I hope you forgive me for doubting you. I thought your story was just, well, just a story. Oh, think nothing of it, boy. Remember, when you're in the wonderful world of trains, all kinds of wonderful things can happen. Action, thrills, excitement, wheels, the glint of steel rails. Oh, it gets you, boy. I tell you, there's nothing like it. Nothing like the wonderful world of trains. Huh? Oh, did someone say the wonderful world of trains? Oh, my goodness, my goodness. I must be getting on with it. You, sir, can you tell me the time? The time. I mustn't be late. For I am the guide for the wonderful world of trains, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The time. The time, sir. The time? Methinks it's time for me to leave. Uh, beyond a question of a doubt, it is time for me to leave. I'm Algy Caboose, I'm on the loose in the wonderful world of trains. There's plenty of action, thrills and fun across the hills and plains. Cause you control the countryside, it's all at your command. The finest trains you ever saw, the switch is in your hand. So no matter how old or young you are, from six to sixty-five, when you're in the wonderful land of trains, it's great to be alive. Oh, it's great to be alive. Hmm. Odd fellow. Curious set of circumstances. Uh, are you there? Officer? Officer. What can I do for you, Professor? The show. The show. When does it start? Start? The show? Oh, you mean the wonderful world of trains. Why, Professor, it's just about over. It seems you fell asleep, and a fellow by the name of Algy took over for you. Asleep? I fell asleep? Algy took over. Where is he? Where is he? That, 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 that raggedy rogue. He, he put me to sleep. To sleep. To sleep. Oh, to sleep. To sleep. Oh, I love to sleep. wonderful world of trains tomorrow. Presented by the Lionel Corporation.